Welcome to our lecture online. Let's assume here that we have a cylinder that's sitting in a corner and we're trying to find the moment required for pending motion. In other words, have sufficient moment to almost begin turning that cylinder and only friction is keeping it from turning. We know we're going to have some friction force here and we're going to have some friction force there. So we need to determine what those friction forces are and therefore we'll have to determine the normal forces at those two locations. So to do that, and here's my pens, we're going to need to realize that we have the weight pulling down. So we have an mg in this direction and then we're going to have the normal force pushing back. Now normal, notice that the normal force is going to be less than the weight. Why so? Is because you also have a friction force acting upward here so that the sum of the forces will still add up to zero. So that means we have a normal force here. We're going to have a normal force here and we'll see in just a moment why, which means we're going to have a friction force in this direction. So this is friction force at A and that is going to be equal to, if this is N sub A, the normal force at A times the coefficient of friction, mu sub s. And here we'll call that n sub b, and therefore we're going to have a friction force in this direction. Notice by turning the cylinder this way, or a wheel this way, you're going to be finding friction in the opposite direction, so it'll be force friction in this direction. Let's call that force friction b, and that's going to be the normal force at b times mu sub s. So you can see here that the sum of the normal force at B and the friction force at A together will equal the weight of the cylinder. So now what we're doing is we're going to come up with a friction force here. So the friction force at B is going to be equal to the normal force and the normal force is going to be mg minus the friction force at A. And we're going to multiply that times mu sub s. And so that's the friction force at B. That means the normal force is going to be equal to the friction force at B because the sum of the force in direction, x direction is simply going to be the sum of these two forces right here. So therefore, this must equal that. So therefore, n sub a must equal the friction force at B in magnitude. So therefore, that is equal to mg minus the friction force at A times mu sub s. And now we're ready to calculate the friction force at A. The friction force at A is equal to the normal force at A times mu sub s. And the normal force at A is equal to that. So we can say that the friction force at A is equal to mg minus friction force at A times mu sub s, so that's n sub A, and now we have to multiply that again times mu sub s. So this is the normal force at A times mu sub s. That means that the friction force at A is equal to mg mu sub s squared minus the friction force at A times mu sub s squared. By moving this to the other side and factoring out the friction force at A, we can say that the friction force at A is therefore equal to uh, times 1 plus mu sub s squared, because when I move this across, that becomes positive. I factor out the friction force at A, I'm left with a 1 plus mu sub s squared, and that equals mg mu sub s squared. And finally, that means that friction force at A is equal to mg mu sub s squared divided by 1 plus mu sub s squared. So now we have an expression in terms of mg and mu sub s for the friction force at A, which now allows us to find the friction force at B. So therefore, F friction force at B is equal to mg minus the friction force at A, which is equal to this. So it's equal to mg mu sub s squared divided by 1 plus mu sub s squared, and the whole thing times mu sub s. Now, I want to write all this over a common denominator. 
So I can say that force, friction force of B is equal to mg times 1 plus mu sub s squared minus mg mu sub s squared all divided over 1 plus mu sub s squared and the whole thing times mu sub s. And now notice that I will have an mg mu sub s squared minus mg mu sub s squared, so that will cancel, so this will cancel with that, and I'm left with an mg mu sub s divided by 1 plus mu sub s squared for friction force B. So force friction B is equal to mg mu sub s divided by 1 plus mu sub s squared. So now I have an expression for friction force at B, and I have an expression for friction force at A. What I can do now is I can now find the moment required for pending motion by simply summing up the moments about this point right here, the middle of the cylinder or the middle of the wheel. So now I can say that, and let me go like this here because I need some board space. So the sum of all the moments about C must add up to zero. What I'm going to need to set up a moment is I'm going to need what we call a, a couple. So we're going to need a force in one direction this way and a force in the other direction this way. So this will like form a couple and that will be the moment of that. So we can say that the moment of that and notice that the moment will be in a counterclockwise direction that's positive. So the moment Plus, let's see here. Now these will, of course, the couple will create the moment, so that's equal to m. And that's what we're looking for. And then, notice that the two normal forces here and the weight will not create a moment because the, the action of these forces go right through the pivot point, right to the point of rotation. So only the friction force at B and the friction force at A will create a torque or a moment. And notice that both of them will cause a moment in the clockwise direction, so that will be minus. So minus the friction force at A times the distance from the pivot point to the action of the force, that's the radius of the wheel, assuming that the radius will be equal to R. And so minus the friction force at B times the radius. That means that the moment is equal to the sum of these two. It means that the moment is equal to the friction force at A times R plus the friction force at B times R. So let's see here, that would be mg mu sub s squared over 1 plus mu sub s squared plus the friction force at B, mg mu sub s to the first power divided by 1 plus mu sub s squared and the whole thing times r. Now notice on those two terms I can factor out an m, a g, and a mu sub s and I'm left with a mu sub s plus 1 in the numerator and a common denominator of 1 plus mu sub s squared. So the result then will be that the moment is equal to in the numerator I will end up with a mu sub s plus 1 times and m g mu sub s r all divided by a 1 plus mu sub s squared and that will be the moment required just to get to the pending motion any additional moment and the wheel begin to slip and starts rotating so that's how we find that and of course we don't have any values for r or m or g or well g we do but mu sub s and so forth if we did we just plug them in and come up with the exact number. But that's how it's done.